<clears throat> so, for we're going to start with the potato soup on page 157. Now, you're going to need six potatoes. Now, here's a little tip. I already started pre... Um, I already pre-cut these potatoes, but I wanted to show you a little trick here I learned from my mom. She, back then they didn't have paper, pa or plastic sacks. She used newspaper. So you can use newspaper, whatever you want, plastic sacks or whatever you want. But when you peel things like carrots or potatoes or whatever, I just peel mine straight over the trash and just throw them straight in there. But you can peel them on a plastic bag or a newspaper and then just roll it up and then throw it away. That is a nifty difty little um, trick there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut your potatoes in quarters and then you're going to cut them in little cubes. Okay? And you want them to be about the about as close as you can get to all the same size, okay? Then come this way, Dave. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put them in your water right here. I've got six potatoes right here, all cubed. Got them. Six potatoes looking delicious. About the same size. Oh, then. about the same size. Yeah. And we got our potatoes started, okay? So then we're going to go get our garlic cheese biscuits, which is on page 136 in Dining on a Dime. Nom, 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 nom. I shared the potato soup recipes. I'm sharing the garlic cheese biscuits recipes. And we are going to make garlic cheese biscuits. Now, what you want to do is you want to take... Are they going to be cheese filled? Uh, just <clears throat> cheese in the biscuits. Oh. You're going to take two... Shoot, tell Auntie Shayla I'm live and I'll call her back. Um, unless she needs me right now. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our flour in here. And sorry, guys, my brother is having major problems and then my grandmother ended up in the hospital today so that's why we can't really quite turn the phone off. Okay, um, flour, I take it she didn't need me right away? No. Okay. She said just call it. Okay, her and baking powder. And then you're gonna take your salt and put that in. I don't know why when my salt shaker gets full it comes out slower. Okay, my salt and then garlic powder. Of course, you can measure this. I just guesstimate because it's not really that big of a deal. And I don't have any chives, so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of onion powder in there. My favorite channel okay. living on a dime is live on Facebook. Oh Your favorite channel living on a dime is live, huh? Who said that? Me. David. Oh. Albany Mountain Homestead said, got a 50 pound bag of potatoes for $20. Now we can make lots of potatoes. Wow. <clears throat> That's a good deal. They, they dehydrate really well too. Mom dehydrates them when we get a lot. Okay. So then you have in here your, um, mix of, sorry about that. Your mix of, um, ba uh, baking powder and flour sorry. and all that. Okay, so then we're going to take four tablespoons, which is a quarter of a cup, and we're going to put four tablespoons in there of shortening. Yes, if you want to use butter or margarine, whatever you want, you may do that. Butter, butter, and butter. Garlic <laughs> <laughs> <Probably> butter. <laughs> then you're going to take, okay, if anybody knows who that is, let me know, and we'll know how old you are. <laughs> 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 then I just take my fingers and I just take the shortening and I just push the flour through the shortening. Okay? <laughs> and uh, until it comes to be a consistency of cornmeal. Just like that. Okay? Then we need one cup of milk. Mm. 
Michelle Phillips now, says, happy to see you back. Thank you. <clears throat> now, if you like, um, or if you have extra um, sour milk, when your milk goes sour, don't throw it away. Save it for baking, okay? I'm using uh, dry milk for this because I have dry milk that I need to use up. But if you have sour milk, you can freeze it in little um, ice cube trays or a quarter or one cup, um, what do you call it, measurements. And it works really well and then you're not wasting milk. Okay, so then I'm putting in my cheese. This is Mike's, one of Mike's favorite recipes. I, I love these biscuits. Isn't it? Yes. Okay, and then just because I love Mike, I'm going to add this extra secret ingredient that's not in the recipe. <gasps> to the biscuits? And then we'll make it super yummy. I just wondered you could put that in biscuits. Yeah, it's really what is good. That? Oh, my Bacon. favorite super uh, ingredient. Oh, uh, in garlic biscuits? Oh, oh man, this will be good. Uh -huh. Yes, Rebecca, that is who I was imitating. I probably shouldn't admit it on the show since <laughs> I would say it's a little bit inappropriate now. <laughs> But it, it has relevance to what happened to Tara yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop it! <laughs> what? No, I didn't Act say... your age, no, Dad. Oh, I was I hollering at... the oil is hot. No, I was hollering at Dad. The end says pretty nails, oh, Tara. Okay. Oh, thank you. You like them? A dollar from Walmart. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to do a video on how fake nails changed my life. <laughs> what do you think? I think that's a great video. Okay, so then you want to just get everything kneaded in a little bit. You don't want it to be super wet, but you don't want it to be really dry either. Mine's a slightly on the wet side. Yes. Shayla's on. Yeah. Hello, Shayla. That's she my sister-in-law. She says, oh, here. sorry, I forgot it was Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know why my sister-in-law has had a little bit on her mind yes, dealing Judy. with my brother. Sorry. Yes, Judy, these are like the Red Lobster Wait. ones. Oh, you yes. Guys got a Except super I'm not chat. sure if they do the bacon, but yo. Yes. Eco Vermont super chatted $2 saying, Welcome back, Tara. Aw, thanks so much. Hey. Okay. That's so nice. Oops, I just smushed my bake my uh Violet says my biscuits always turn hard as hockey pucks. Seriously, they're that hard, even following a recipe. What am I doing wrong? Okay, is your baking powder fresh? Cause it answer that question and then I will troubleshoot from there but 95 percent of the time it's that your bake well almost a hundred percent of the time it's that your bacon or, or that your bacon <laughs> your baking powder is not fresh <laughs> Albany Mountain Homestead the world needs more bacon people I think so um Shayla do you want me to tell our viewers what is wrong with David and not see me. if anyone has had experience with that I will do that if you would like okay do you want mini or do we want big ones do big ones okay big, big ones. ones big ones big ones okay. but you gotta wrap them up but you gotta like get a cheese injector and squirt it in there like a squirt them in with cheese like you frilling a donut with oh my goodness I'm just kidding, don't do that. It you might not be the big, big? best. Just, just big. Guys, big. everything smells really good in the house right now. Thank you. Sm do I smell like a, smell like a domestic goddess? Yes, you do. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I rolled these a little thin. You can just mush but... it back in there and re roll it. <gasps> oh my. That's all right. Music Mad says, yay, after three years, I finally got an appointment for a scan on my spine. Hopefully wow. find out why I have next to no feeling in my lower right leg, foot, and toes. Hospitals <gasps> are so slow. Ah, that sounds awful to have to wait that oh, long. Oh man, I think it's socialized medicine. Sorry. That's why we're not big on it here. Because I want to be able to get treatment when things go wrong. Not that treatment has helped my brother, but... Oh, yeah. I hope I pronounced your name right, but... Chow? Chow? Happy birthday. Did I say it right? Oh, happy birthday! Okay. So I'm getting it all cut out here. I turned my oven on 400. Okay, this is a little difficult with the bacon pieces. Interesting. I never thought about the bacon getting stuck in. 
Oh man, Monique is making me hungry. She says, I received my cookbook last week, made the chocolate pudding on Monday, it was delicious. Ah, uh, thanks. BJ so loves the chocolate like pudding it. too. Yes. Do you put garlic in there, Mom? Yep. And he makes a massive amount of it all at once. Because the garlic made it difficult to do the pizzas. <clears throat> I hear the potatoes boiling. Yes, Vicky. Yes, so they're boiling now, and you don't want them to get too soft because then you'll have mashed potato soup, which is totally fine. When the kids were babies and I wasn't able to pay attention to my cooking very well, no comments from the peanut gallery, uh, <laughs> I would I don't often. I remember ever complaining about your cooking. I would often. Um, <laughs> I was smart enough to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Actually, I ate. You can tell by looking at me that I haven't missed her cooking too much. <laughs> you were smart enough to keep your mouth shut. Now that's a well-trained man there. <laughs> Not that you needed much training. You were actually very good. Okay, there we go. Hmm? All right. Copyright strike for humming. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna. Oh my word! I'll go take it <laughs> I'm gonna put these in the oven, right here. And oh, that is the mail guy coming to get your orders. We had to put them inside today because we got an unexpected snowstorm. A blizzard. A blizzard. There's an actual blizzard. Here. Yeah, it actually was snowing pretty good. It was like thick. Okay, so. Yes, my love. Yeah. That was our um, new postal worker and he was gracious enough to come get the books. We would have left him on the porch, but it would have sent snow to everybody and I'm not sure it would have survived. Good. In the Yay. mail, the snow. It would have been <laughs> water. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Jamie asks, how did the guacamole you put Water oh, over turn out. Yeah. We did not take a picture. I should have. It turned out great for several days, right? It was green for probably four days. The main thing is yeah. it started to get funky because we were trying to save it to show and everybody kept moving it and turning it around and stuff and it sort of started mixing in with the water a little bit. Yeah. But the time before before they did that, for like four days, it stayed bright green. Yeah. So so now we know. It appears that if you have guacamole and you want to make it last longer, you can store it with oh, just a little water over the top and then drain it off before <clears throat> you serve it again. Stop it. Oh, man. Sherry says, thank you for the tip about old baking powder. You just resolved my issue as well. Great question and glad someone asked it. Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, it could be something else, but I'm like really 99.9% .9 sure your baking powder is expired. That is one thing that if it is not fresh, that in yeast is not fresh, is not fresh, your stuff will not turn out. Uh, oh, perfect. Okay, so can you guys see what I just did? Okay, come here, Dave. Oh, no, they can't. Come down. Okay, so I just stabbed in just like that. Did you see how smoothly that it went in? Okay, one more time. One, two, three. That's the perfect consistency, okay? So then, we're going to drain it off. Okay, now, if you use dry milk, if you want to use dry milk, you can. Don't drain off the water, just leave it in there and sprinkle your dry milk in and stir it, okay? If you're going to use, oh shoot, um, if you're going to use um, regular milk, drain it off. Now, I have two chicken bouillon cubes, and what I do is I put my bouillon in a little bit of water. Oh. And usually I pour the boiling water on top of it, and I just poured it out and forgot. So. Well, someone else oh. said uh, if they need the biscuits too long, they could do that too. Which yeah. Which would be... But what immediately popped to my mind is if you make biscuits with just flour and water and maybe salt, they'll turn out like grits. Yeah. So that would explain why the baking powder would be... And don't need them too long either. Only need them five, six times. Just enough to get enough flour so they're not super, super sticky. Okay? All right. So what we're going to put in here next is our milk. <clears throat> yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna put our milk in. Yes. No, but we can show them when, when I'm done cooking. Uh, okay, a little bit more milk. Oh, somebody said if you keep the baking powder in the freezer, it keeps longer. I yeah, know that. it would. Yeah, I keep um, <clears throat> my yeast in the freezer when I get the big one pound packets. Then we're gonna take cheese. And I just use American cheese. You can use cheddar, you can use cheddar jack, whatever. Um, you can use any flavor you want, really. And then I'm gonna sprinkle, because we don't have onion, I'm gonna sprinkle some onion salt in here. Onion powder in here, not salt. Salt. Mike loves garlic and everything, so I'm gonna add some garlic, even though that's not the recipe. Out of Goshen is here, yay! Out of Goshen, hello! Okay, let me see if my chicken bouillon, yep. Okay, so I softened up my chicken bouillon right there. Ooh, then I'm gonna cool. take a fork and just smash it up, and then you don't get a hard piece. Of now you can use chicken stock if you want, of course, but we just use the bouillon for flavoring. Okay. Amy says. Pour that in. Purple looks good on you, Tara. And others were commenting on how much they love your apron. Oh, thank you. I feel that since it is freezing cold out, we should have our inner summer come. You're channeling your inner kiwi. I'm channeling my inner kiwi for summer. <laughs> Kiwana? No, right now I'm reading a book about a gal that's oh, in New Zealand, oh, New and Zealand. I thought, yeah. I feel like doing everything New Zealand. Yeah, I forgot. So, okay. And then I have a big pan here that Dave keeps diving into. A bacon that I cooked up of bacon slices. Hey, I'm sorry you're tempting me. And I'm gonna break it all up here, dude. You better keep those hands back. Break them all up. <gasps> Oh no! Hi, Kel Bandana Grandma. Hi, Kellen family and friends. In the middle of typing that, I spilled a whole cup of coffee over the table, including my grandson's homework. Oh! Oh! Oh no! It'll give it some color. Yeah, it'll do something. <laughs> now, if you don't have bacon, or you can't afford bacon, what I do is I keep my bacon grease in a jar in the fridge, or the freezer, whatever you want to do, and then you can put like one or two tablespoons of bacon in your potato soup. Okay, so or now we're going to put this back on the stove. Or you can Bridget says out, you're yeah. making her hungry. Yay! <laughs> what? 80 degrees here today. Where are you, Danny? It's like 10 degrees in Colorado and it's supposed to be below zero tonight. And we're on the flatland in front of the mountains. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked if you set the timer. I did and I just turned it off. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. Many prayers for David. Yes, thank you, everybody. We appreciate that. Okay. Ooh, All right. Girl in World is on. Hello. Naomi. Hello. Naomi. Yeah. Okay. So then we're gonna let no, that. No, that's Hannah. Isn't er, no, oh no, that is no, Naomi. Sorry. Hannah, I'm sorry. Girl in World is Naomi. I apologize. I, I know Hannah's what I'm talking is. about. What's Hannah? Okay. Hannah's, Hannah's is oh, that creative that bug. That creative bug. Right. Boy. Um, okay. So you guys can see, in about 15 minutes. Dinner is ready, basically. I mean, it's I don't cooking. have to do any more prep. I have about 10 minutes left of cooking and melting the cheese, and that's it. So that's the beauty of dining on a dead cookbook. The recipes are really quick and easy. Michael put the link in there for you. Because uh, Mom and I were <laughs> Mom and I were noting the other day. <laughs> I don't know where she saw this. I don't know if it was Facebook or YouTube or what, but these people were talking about how they spent eight hours prepping their food on Sunday. No, four hours. Two of them spent four hours, eight hours total, prepping their food on Sunday. And both mom and I were like, wait a minute, why did they just spend eight hours cooking for the week ahead? That's more than an hour and a half for each day day well not even no not more than an hour and a half let's see because we don't count i don't count two days a week of cooking so like usually people go out to eat one day and then one day they have leftovers so really there's only five days that you need to cook and both mom and i were like how in the world are they spending eight hours prepping for food 
for the week. We couldn't believe it. So anyway, pick recipes that are quick and easy and can get you in and out of the kitchen. Yes. Okay, so did Shayla say if I can say what's wrong with David or no? Because I don't want to. She did, but let's see. Do you want to? Oh, Linda said, I have three avocado trees. Thank you for the water tip. I You're am welcome. so envious if you have avocado trees. <laughs> I'd be eating guacamole every day. Oh, well, not man. quite that much, but. I would. Yum. Uh, so she said that yes, we can share? Uh, yes, she okay. did say you can share. Okay, so questions before we get to my brother, and then my grandmother ended up in the hospital today also, so we just have a little bit we were going to tell you about. Ooh, Jennifer says it's still snowing in Boulder. Wow. She also said something else. What was it? There was something else that I saw that she said that I thought was funny. Uh, she's, oh, well, I guess she said, I actually told my husband the world needs more salt people while we were making pasta last night. <laughs> You should go over there and... Oh, oh It's funny. We should sneak over there and put her on the show. I know, we should. <laughs> it's funny because people can't figure out why their food doesn't taste very well. The reason why it doesn't taste very well is nine times out of ten you don't have enough salt. That's really the problem. Oh, thank yes. you, Marcy. Marcy says not only are the recipes in Dino Dime quick, they're delicious too. Oh, Thanks. What's funny is when I was making them while Tara was gone, <clears throat> I was sticking a little longer because I was chit-chatting too much. Yes. Uh, Judy, are these your very own recipes that you have created? So these are recipes that have been handed down from my, um, from my great-grandma and my grandma and my mom and I. You can see right here. Just a second, Jack. Hold There's on. even one from Ellie in there. Um, there? You can see right here. Here's, here's a recipe card for my great-grandma right there. Um, here is, uh, let me see where it This went. one looks really cool. Did you show that one? Yeah. I love the, the um, letterhead. Oh, whoops. Did we, where'd it go? Hold on just a second. Whoa, 76 in Texas, 78 in South Carolina. Oh, here. And here's a picture of my mom and my grandma and me and my daughter. So these, um, I have three gram, four grandmas that these are their recipes. Wait a minute, four grandmas? One, two, three. Grandma Cooper, Grandma Shuler, Grandma Bessie, Grandma Tatum. Four grandmas, my mom, me, and my daughter. So seven family members have contributed to this. And then about half of the recipes are mine that I did. Um, when I was trying to cook, I didn't invent them all. Recipes aren't copyright protected. So recipes are a recipe. I mean, you know, you can't copyright protect recipes. So some of these were some that I found on the internet, some that I had found on the internet and changed to make them more frugal. We mostly that changed kind of them thing. for various reasons, like yeah. to make them more frugal uh, or because we liked them better a different way. Yeah. And that's pretty common. Like most, pretty much all, Almost all recipes have been around for ages, mm -hmm. but they're constantly being adapted and changed and made into new recipes. Like, yeah. like for instance, the Mike's Baking Powder Biscuits. I have to toot my own horn on that. <clears throat> Is that my one recipe or do I have more That's than one? That's your one recipe. <laughs> I fiddled with it and tweaked it and it, it wouldn't be recognizable from the recipe I started with. Because yeah. I put about eight pounds more butter in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, show them your hamster. <clears throat> um, so... At school, uh, my uh, innovation teacher 3D printed me this little... Um, with the 3D printer. Yeah, with the 3D printer. That's pretty cool. This little hamster. Because you love hamsters, don't you? Yeah. Jack is and, dying uh, to have a hamster and, for a pet. <laughs> and I painted him because he was originally all black. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So, so he's pretty cute. Yeah. See? So, right there. Jack, there he is. Huh? Did you, I didn't hear. Did you say why you're teacher made that for you no well she made that for you because she was so impressed at something you did in her class remember what yeah. it was <laughs> so I made this uh, American flag program that makes an American flag mm -hmm. like draws an American flag with only code a computer mm -hmm. program yeah and um, and she, uh, she was extremely impressed with it <laughs> yep and yep. it got Did like a good job. and it got like twenty one thousand views on Twitter. 
<laughs> yeah, she, so I came into the school and, and they're like, oh, Miss So-and-so wants to see you, Jack. So Jack and I went in there and, and she had his project up on the giant screen in front of the class. We're like, what's going on? So, so she said, oh, did Jack show you the, the project he made? He programmed this thing that goes from a 1776 American flag to a 2019 American flag. But they were doing all the programming behind the scenes, and she was she was just really stunned at how efficient his code writing was in programming it. Yeah. <clears throat> Apparently, that's it's really unusual to do that. So she posted it on an educational on her Twitter for other teachers to share, and it had twenty one thousand views in the first five days. So we were we were pretty excited for Jack, right? Yeah. Yeah. You did good. Ooh, is okay, it done so the potato soup is done. Now, if you want a thicker potato soup, you can add a, two tablespoons of cornstarch into a half a cup of water, stir it up, and put it in there and then thicken it up. That will thicken also. Okay, so my brother, he had an MRI yesterday morning, or no, he went to the doctor yesterday morning. They thought that he had possibly had a stroke. The doctor was very angry that they didn't leave him in the hospital to make sure. Um, he had an MRI this morning. He found out that um, he did not have a stroke, thankfully, but that he has three bulging discs and he has a narrowing at the base of his skull. Well, that narrowing at the base of your skull is one of the things that they think causes chronic fatigue syndrome. So it will be interesting to see. They are coming out on Sunday and Monday. He has a, an appointment with a spine doctor here in Denver. And hopefully he can get some help. So if you guys have been through that or know of any good uh, tips or anything that we need to or know, please let us know. Um, thank you, everyone. Please continue to pray for him. We really appreciate all of your prayers. Um, my grandma this morning, or this afternoon, ended up in the ER. <laughs> Mom's mom. <laughs> she had some scar tissue that had grown on her throat and was constricting her throat. She is in surgery now, I think. And so I will not be making soap tomorrow morning because I have to drive her back to the doctor. My uncle, my mom's brother, his wife, her mom is... Term, terminally ill and they don't think she's going to last very much longer so they have to drive to Montana <laughs> to go do that so well, it's, we just had a pretty good size yeah we just dumping had a of snow and major stuff, so storm not the best time to be traveling so everything's been totally chaotic but you guys want to hear my adventure wait can we ask one or two questions real quick i want to tell them my adventure well julie's asking any suggestions for using crust cut off of bread other than croutons yes you croutons are an awesome way though you mean yes, what are your suggestions? Sweet. Okay, my stove was not heated all the way up, so it's taking a few more minutes for my biscuits. Um, croutons are the number one way that I love. You can make bread pudding. You can grind them up for um, bread crumbs. Dry them, grind them up, use them for bread crumbs. What do you use bread crumbs in? On the top of casseroles, in meatloaf, in meatballs, anything for coating chicken, that kind of thing. Those are a few ways that you can use them. Lots of people sending prayers. Jack, lots of people saying, way to go, good job, Jack. And also talking about the hamster thing. And Jolene said, my 11 year old has a hamster named Whis Mr. Whiskers. Aww. He's smiling and looking all satisfied over there. Mr. Whiskers, that's cute. Looking satisfied. Thank you, my love. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Amy apparently has never seen it served chunky before. Yum. I don't know if Tara told you. Actually, it's good chunky, but she cooks it enough where it's soft, though. It's not, like, crunchy. Crunchy yeah. potatoes are icky. But yeah, it's funny because, actually, we didn't tell everybody. <clears throat> For those of you who know Sue Wilson on the oh, YouTube side. Oh, I was getting side, there. I just hadn't got there yet. Oh. Well... We visited her today, and after that, we were trying to brainstorm about it, and nobody came up with any ideas, so then I told her, I think potato soup sounds awesome today, since it's like 10 degrees out. Go ahead. You can talk about soup. So we got to see Sue. She lives in England. 
but her son just happens to live down the road from us. <laughs> and we met her because she ordered a book and sent it to her son. And I was like, well, that's right here. Like, well, that's weird. She said, yeah. She said, my son lives down the street. And so for Delicious. what, three years, two years, two or three years, we've been seeing them now, three years almost. Three years when they come out to visit him. We're going to go, go see, see them see at their him. place again. Yeah. So they've come out here four or five times to see uh, to see him, and we visited them each time. And then when Ellie and I went to Ireland and the UK, uh, we visited her the third day we were there. It was so mm -hmm. awesome going to their, to their house in their town. Uh, probably shouldn't say exactly what town they're in, but I think in the UK they would refer to her area as the Midlands. So they're about an hour north of London. <gasps> Dave, so. that's exactly what I've been... Give me a high five. But we always love it when they come over. <laughs> no, no high fives for you. Show them your picture you just took. No. Dave. No. All right, Dave just took a gorgeous picture of my soap. Oh, I this is the soap that I made yesterday, guys. It's black raspberry Ooh. vanilla. Mike will go get the link. We forgot to get the link. Tracy, Jack, Tracy says, I had a hamster when I was your age. It got out of its cage and ate big holes in my mom's curtains. And oh. that's why mom says no. That's why uh, mom Where's the mom. link? Over here. Uh, homemade soap making supplies. Oh. Do I not yep. have that on our show notes? I'm waiting for you. And then go to the soaps. So guys, just give me the soaps link. So this is my black raspberry and vanilla soap oh, I that oh, this right. smells divine. Ooh. What am I saying in that? I usually put a little blurb just with it. Just Tara's soap. Um, I only have 18 bars of this. It will ship on March 4th. Anything you order in that order will also ship on March 4th. And we are going to cut it right now. You guys saw me make it live yesterday. I was going to make soap live tomorrow, but I have to take my grandma to the hospital, so I'm gonna have to cancel that. Are you done, Dave, or do you wanna? No, I was gonna take it while you're Oh, thank you, okay. Now this is still pretty soft. Yes, yes, Linda, you should make this potato soup. It's delish. And I particularly craved it because when it's kind of cold and stuff, we used to eat it, make it a lot in Idaho. Look at that, guys. Didn't that turn out good? Woo! Oh, man. Oh, speaking of okay. London, you is ready, it Ada? No, I didn't check Hi, Ada. Okay, clean it off. Okay, so you guys want to hear about my adventure? Oh, no. Do they want to... Do they want to hear about how I, I almost died? Why you didn't record it. Yeah, how you were <laughs> had a hot little situation there. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hot situation. Oh, guys, wait a minute. Look at that. Mmm. Mm. Oh man, that smells good. It's really soft. I don't want to smell. Hold on, just a second. Um. So Monday after the show. I went, Ooh. so I have this little portable sauna. Mike, show them what the portable sauna looks like. Oh, uh, by the way, we have two two birthdays later, too. Um, can I? I um, have this little portable sauna, so show them what it is. <clears throat> so you zip yourself up in this little sauna, okay? Well, can you see it? Yeah. So you, yeah, well, some people sit in it with their heads sticking out, but Tara likes to just sit inside of it and read a book. Well, and the reason why I do that is because I don't sweat. So I had to get my head in, in there also so that I could get my body to sweat because I don't detoxify very well. And so... Um... Somebody says, I smell biscuits. I'm like, where, where? <laughs> so uh, I was sitting, just minding my... Oh, look, we did our UK... Our UK towel in honor of Sue, who we visited today. Yes. Uh, okay. Was on purpose? I don't even know. All right, they're almost done. Um, Ooh, everyone's loving yourselves. So I was sitting in the sauna, just minding my own business, reading a book, and I was sitting in it in the bathroom, and Mike happened to be on the bed in our room, about four feet away. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, and I thought, man, I wonder what had happened if this thing started on fire. <laughs> but, uh, no big deal. So, I, here's the thing, guys. When the Holy Spirit tells you something, listen. <laughs> I do this all the time, and I don't listen, and I always regret it. I almost regretted it again. So, <laughs> I'm sitting there, just reading my book, and all of a sudden, I hear this crackling on the side. It starts to... I look over, and I'm like, 
what? I look and it's smoking. So, so Mike uh, was on the bed and I start screaming, it's on fire, unplug it, Mike, Mike, it's on fire, unplug it. And he was like, what? And all of a sudden it bursts into flames and I am zipped up inside, of it. inside this sauna that has a bar going over the front that you put together to keep the sides going up. And the thing is flaming on the side of the thing. So Mike comes in and tell him what you see. <laughs> well, I come in and I see the whole thing kind of dancing like this. And here, let me get the picture out again. <clears throat> so you can see it there. <clears throat> it, that's what it looks like. And it's, it's uh, fairly large, but I see the whole thing kind of going sideways like this. <laughs> and, and of course it's plugged in. So she's kind of attached to the wall and I, she's in there screaming. So I flip, fling open. I mean, this all happens like in a fraction of a second. Yeah. I fling open the door and I reach and I pull the plug right away. And it stopped, thankfully. But she was yelling, fire, fire, it's on fire. <laughs> Oh I cannot believe I didn't set my hair on fire flipping all over the place because it's really, it's really close in there. So that was my big adventure Monday after the show. You probably shouldn't flip on these. I, I, uh, What's funny is I have say, never heard her yell like that and we've had some serious things happen in our lives. Well, I think it freaked me out because I, ooh, I love this one. Oh no, oh no, I smeared it. Oh shoot. I think it freaked me out because Ooh. I had just thought, I wonder if this thing would go up in flames. What would happen? And then it does. <laughs> and then it does. So that was a little bit freaky. That was our adventure. Oh no, Tara, I had been freaking out so bad. It was an I Love Lucy episode. Oh LOL. my word. My friend Jamie who's on here, was like, Tara, why were you not recording? I was like, Jamie, I was naked. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, well, you could have just blurred out on the important parts. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to be famous for. The woman who burns up in the sauna well, the thing trying to get out. <laughs> well, the thing is that inside it's probably about like this big. So, well, actually even closer than that. It's probably about like this big. And so there was like a flame shooting out of one side, apparently. Yeah. From what I... And we looked at it later, and it doesn't look too bad, but I, I think it, it was coming out like a torch. So it made me wonder if there was some kind of gas in the in well, the works that was burning as it was coming out. Then me and Mom plugged it in, stood out here, and every five minutes it would spark. Like, really so we were bright. trying to get it to go up in flames last night and do a video on my experience, but we couldn't get it to go in flames. It just kept sparking. It kept arcing and flashing and yeah. stuff. Tammy says that sounds like an episode of the Lucille Ball Show. I'm laughing so oh, hard. Oh my goodness. It's funny to laugh. It's funny because we laugh at it afterwards, but she was pretty shaken. Oh, man. And, I couldn't stop shaking for like well, two hours. And like I said, we've had some fairly serious things happen, and she's always kind of a rock in those situations. Yeah. But this one, uh, not so much. Uh -huh. Aha! So Jean wants to know, what is the fragrance of the soap? Black raspberry vanilla, and it smells divine. Okay, no. guys. So remember me talking about the baking powder being expired? So my biscuits didn't poof up very big. Look at that. It expired. No, I can't see it at can all. Can you see it? No, 517. You can't this, this was a brand new container, 517. So 517 your baking year. powder will do it. Let's see if it's still tasty though. Jonathan! Jonathan! Good to see you. I was about to say I was actually recording a video for you when I was on the bed outside of the bathroom. When that happened, which is why we sent you that quick little blurb at that See, moment. Jonathan was in the middle of an adventure and he didn't know. Do they still taste good even mm. though they didn't rise? Mm-hmm. Shoot. They must have risen some because they're not like bricks. Okay. They're not like ice hockey pucks. Like Does it taste said? good? You don't like Ooh. the bacon. Mm. Do mm. you like the bacon? <clears throat> I've never tasted bacon in the biscuits before. So I was, I was giving myself a moment to process. It tastes like breakfast. <laughs> it tastes bacon. like breakfast. Oh, that would be like a breakfast sandwich. It is. It it's does. very much like oh, that. Oh, yeah, like it a bacon, like, egg, and cheese. It Normally. Like when you go to McDonald's and get one of those McBiscuits or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just invented something new. Normally, we don't put the bacon in the biscuits, but Tara did that as a special thing for me, and it is really good. Although, it's really good even without it. Mm -hmm. Why did you record it? I love these. 
And trust me, guys, I would not appreciate having videos of my mother naked on the internet. That's also <laughs> another thing. You didn't want to, huh? Nope. That wouldn't be a fun um. experience. Oh. Jimmy said I had a hamster when I was three months and it was time for lunch and come eat, so I put a hamster in the coffee can. We kept his food in. My tenants were good, but the hamster did not make it. Yeah, that's one thing about... Oops. I always think with little pets... I mean, I'm surprised even with the dog and cat, really, that they don't get hurt a lot more because they're so small and they like to be underfoot a lot. But, kind of like Buster. Well, yeah. the cat actually gets out of the way pretty fast, but... So Buster Jonathan says, it. Florida Singularity says, I used to perform with someone who did not sweat in the middle of summer in the middle of Florida. I don't... Yeah, I don't. Mm. Since I've started doing the sauna, I do a little bit more. But I have to drink a huge glass of water, my hair has to be wet, my body has to be wet, and then I can sit in there, and then it will, I'll sweat, but it takes a, and it takes a half an hour before I do start sweating. It's crazy. So Shelly said, back to where that was, one of the symptoms of low iodine is that you can't sweat. You might yeah, there's no it. way I have low iodine. No? As much salt as I eat? <laughs> well, that's true. Oh, and we, and we only eat the iodized, right? Yeah. I don't think, well, maybe I've got some sort of weird something. Mm, was the adventure good. the the fire? Because Margaret yeah, says yes, adventure, that was my Yeah, that was my fire was the adventure. My fire being locked in the sauna. This is good stuff. It, these are is really good? delicious biscuits. Oh, oh my man. goodness. Dave has this yeah. look on his face like, it's never, paradise on earth. I've never eaten anything so wonderful. Oh, thanks, Dave. <laughs> Does uh, mom get a hug for that? Nope. <laughs> Arlene says my grandma would take one third of the soup and puree it in the blender and add it back to the soup. Yes, That's you can idea. do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Or if you wanted, you could take a hand blender and just do like a section or two in the pot is what I would do. And that thickens it really good. Grandma knew what she was yeah. doing. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, with the birthday candle right over there. I just saw it, but we have a couple birthdays. Oh, Uncle Dave's watching, by the way. Uncle Dave! Hi, Uncle Dave! Everybody's praying for you. We can't wait to see you on Sunday. Sorry, it's not under better circumstances, but mm. poor Uncle Dave is he even conscious. Hey, at least. Um. Okay, least here we go. Family. So I'm not really sure if we're gonna pronounce these names right. I think it's. It looks like Cheo and Iva. So. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Cheo and Iva. Happy birthday to you! Yay! Woo! Except what happened to the candle? I don't know where it went. Well, that was good. <laughs> Happy I birthday! So. So glad to be celebrating with you. Yeah, so today it has just been... Um, Did you report yeah. the sauna defect? Well, here's the thing. I've had the sauna for six years, six or seven years. And so I don't know who I would report it to. And even though I haven't used it a ton, it's not like I've sat in it every day for six years. I've probably used it like one year total in all those six years. Cause I would sit in it for a few weeks and then I'd stop for several months and then I'd sit in it for a few weeks. It's kind of a pain in the butt just to sit there. I do have to say when I lived in Sweden, they did not have a bathroom. Well, they had a toilet, but they didn't have a shower or a bathtub. All they had was a oh, right. sauna. The family, the exchange family that I lived with, all they had was a sauna. <coughs> and so we would take our showers in the sauna by sitting in the sauna, whacking ourselves with these leaves of some sort. And then we just kind of wash off. We didn't even really use soap or anything. We just washed. That's how they did it there. You said in Sweden? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And I love that thing. I would love, there's two things I would love to get. As soon as we pay off the house, my next goals are to buy a sauna and to buy a saltwater hot tub. Can we buy a whole room I think those shower? two things would be great. I just, would love that. Can we just buy a whole room shower? So it's like one shower head every four square feet or something. A whole room just, shower. You turn it on. Did you it... try Uncle Dave's shower? It's kind of like that. Well, yeah, but it's not enough. It's not a full room. I see. What, are you going <laughs> to walk around your, get in your I shower, do your exercise while you're doing your shower? You might as well put a treadmill in there. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Here now. Uh, so when I was in Sweden, I really loved the sauna. Now, it was a little strange when we went to Finland and in Finland, 
everybody sits in the sauna naked and that was a little awkward i will admit and then what they Poor did family <laughs> we were there for midsummer and then what they would do is they would sit in the sauna and they would go jump in this lake which was a glacier <laughs> i was like you people are nuts i did not do that thank you very much but <laughs> it was crazy um Christy, are you still thinking of moving we would love to move, but we cannot find a house. Our house is almost paid off. And so we really don't want to get another mortgage because our house is so close to being paid off. So probably what we're going to do, they're talking now that housing prices are going to start going down in about two years. So what we'll probably do is stay here until they go down and we can save up some more cash. Um, we were actually thinking, though, of probably not leaving yeah. this area. So if we were to buy something else, it yeah. probably would be somewhere in northern Colorado still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brenda, are my soaps good for sensitive skin? Yes. My unscented shea butter and goat's milk and my oatmeal and honey. Um, well, no, my oatmeal and honey has fragrance. The shea butter and goat's milk. Can you see what he needs, Dave? Shea butter and goat's milk unscented soap. Can you find the link for that, Mike? Uh, in your soap store? Yeah. It is real. That's what my son who has eczema uses. Under Mike will get soap. a link here for you so we can point you to the right one. Scroll down. Um, Keep going. Wait, you want me to do a search for it? It's right. No, it should be. Keep going. Right there. Boom. Um, That's the one my son and my brother who both have eczema use. And they love it. It's very moisturizing and... We have people with psoriasis that just love it. Uh, Wait, sorry. psoriasis? Uh-huh. Wait, no, it helps with psoriasis? Yeah. Like Whoa. bone disease? No, psoriasis isn't I mean, like It's a, some disease. kind of skin yeah. disease. Let me just make sure sorry, it goes to the right place before sorry. I share it. Oh, what? Page not found. See, that's what I get for... That's just a huge uh, link. I know. How would I help with that? I wonder if we could put that whole link in there. Let's try it and see. Is it just a moisturizer? Uh, who is it that what is the salt? What is the benefit of a salt water hot tub? So, um, the chlorine in pools oh, and hot tubs makes my chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia worse. And but the hot water really helps my <clears throat> muscle pain. So I love sitting in a hot tub, but the chlorine makes me sick. So if I could do a salt water instead of chlorine, instead of chlorine, then I don't get as sick in Which are not the, the same hot thing. tub. We say so, sauna. Sauna. <laughs> sauna. Yeah. So Christine is saying we say. I think she's saying sauna. Yeah. Finland. Sauna. Yes, I'm Finnish. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, you are, man. We need to come visit. I loved Finland. I thought it was cool. Um, I was a little disturbed when everybody was sitting naked in the sauna. But that's just normal there. <laughs> but that's just nor that's just their culture. But I oh I thought Finland was cool. I think we should go to Norway and Finland and all that again because I really liked it. That would be fun. Um, so Norway. how are BJ and Ellie doing? They're doing great. I'll go Last to Norway. month BJ started a <laughs> super super good job. He's selling cell phones and. He is the number one sales rep in his district in the first 10 days he was working there. With, and, in, out of 50 stores. And his boss said, wow, he said, I've never seen anyone do such great sales and who was honest at the same time. <laughs> Seriously. So, and it's, he doesn't, you know, give people that they don't, things they don't want. He just talks to them and finds out what their needs are. So we're proud of our boy. Yep. We're Actually, not waiting for him to keep us to the style to which we'd like to become accustomed yes. to. Wait, which, which boy? It's funny because I... Well, I'm I, proud of you too. It's funny because I said, <laughs> what are you doing to sell so many? He said, well, I'm just telling people what they told me to say in the training. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, Bonnie, the soap nets are listed and you can buy the soap nets, homemade soap making supplies.com. Coolest thing ever. It's a little net that you put your soap scraps in or your frobage of soaps and it exfoliates and makes your soap lather. You're supposed to be putting links, not eating. Well, we made the biscuits. I'm, I'm, I'm testing the product. <sighs> what links am I putting in? For the soap net. Michael put a link in there for you. Wait, where's the soap net link? On the soap page. Okay. Just give him the soap page. Yeah, why don't we just oh. get like an Epsom salt dispenser? So, so wait, you... 
Uh, if I the one that gets Tara's homemade soaps here, is that where they yep. understand that's the soap nets? Yep. I'm asking. It's on the same page with my soaps. So I'm sharing the get Tara's homemade soaps here. So, what happened with my hair smoking? <laughs> I tell you, I've had it with fire this week. So, at Christmas, I got this new, really cool all-in-one brush and blow dryer thing that's all the rave all over the internet. Can't even get it in the stores. And so I got it to try and help with my hairstyling issues because I am hairstyling impaired. So I get this thing and the first time I use it, mom was here and she walked in and she's like, there is smoke all over the bathroom. I said, well, I didn't think that was quite right. But I thought, well, maybe there was a coating or something on it. So I use it five or six times and it's still smoking. Well, finally, what was it, 10 days ago or so? Two weeks, I don't know, 10 days or two weeks ago, I was doing my hair again. And Mike walks in and he's like... Well, I was standing in our... We have a closet that is in our bathroom. And I was standing in there and I didn't have my glasses on. I said, man, it looks kind of smoky in here. Yeah, and so he was like, okay, it's really smoky in here. I said, well, it's my new hair dryer. He's like... Okay, we need to take the hairdryer back. So I was able to send it back. A new one should be coming tomorrow. So we'll see. Hopefully it will, um, I think it will work better. I really hope. Oh, Shayla will be here. She can style my hair for me. Yep, that'd be great. <clears throat> Willow says I have a hot tub. It bothers my fibro sometimes. Yeah, it's the chlorine. I think it's the chlorine. Now, some people get sick from the heat if you get too heated up, but for me, it's the chlorine, I notice, because when I go in ones that don't have chlorine, I do fine. Mm -hmm. So... Um, didn't Jack, after the whole sauna, the smoking sauna experience, didn't Jack mm. come up to you and, like, hug you and say you smell all smoke? Yeah, Jack yeah. came up and said, Mom, you smell like smoke after the sauna. What was so funny was he called Mom after my whole sauna fire thing. And he called mom and let's see, how did he say it? He said, um, he said, I think he said, yeah, mom was on fire in the sauna. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, man, mom was on fire in the sauna. <laughs> just like, it's just another day. <laughs> because it is another day at home. I didn't say that. Yeah, you said it some, some way like that. Oh, the sauna caught on fire. The sauna caught on fire. Oh, I was going to so, say, I didn't see who asked, but uh, somebody asked about, yeah, Mike is making sure the quality of your cooking is unbelievable. <laughs> I am. Uh, I forgot who it was. I thought it was maybe Diane. Asked about the, the, the biscuit recipe again, and I am sharing it now for you. I just All these it. recipes can be found at livingonadime.com. When we do the show, we put them on the front <laughs> page, so they're the first ones if you guys ever need them. Um... But you can also, if it's Hello, after buddy. the show and you're watching it later, you can do a search. <laughs> um, fire yeah. February must be fire month. Yeah. I know. So I, when she posted it on Facebook, I posted a little meme that some of you might recognize. Somebody saying, level's cool. And they're like, fire, 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 fire. <laughs> then he posted another one that said, no smoking. Aren't no, you funny? No smoking. Well, we always love to... To, uh, we have, we um, always joke about things after they happen, even yes. rough or difficult things. I don't know. Yes. It's it's fun to laugh at it after the fact. Uh, how old was were Mike and I when we started dating? Dating each other or dating in general? <laughs> I think she means each other. Uh, he was twenty four. Ooh, very good. He was 24 and I was 22, and we got married when I was 23 and he was 24. <laughs> we only we got, dated for six months. We got engaged three months after we met, and we got married six months after we met, and I would suggest long engagements. Oh, <laughs> thanks. No, I'm kidding. That's we're on how many years now? What is this, 19? Like I said, I suggest <laughs> long engagements. Uh, whoa, <laughs> this is going to be 25 this year. Yeah, so we have sad news. So what we need to do is pay off the house this year before our anniversary and then yes. go to Fiji go to or somewhere. Bahamas. Yes, yes, that would be great. So, <laughs> you know our, our beater car, our Saturn? So we've been limping along and we just drove to Kansas. Sorry, go ahead. 
<laughs> we took it to the mechanic and spent $430 on it on Monday. No, a week ago Monday. A week ago Monday. And Mike was like, um, I'm having to still put antifreeze in. So we took it back today and they want... Uh, <laughs> they said, oops. Well, it appeared that that was leaking, but now it looks like this other thing is leaking. So that's going to be, it'll be $350 more. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> this car is worth about $500, but we've been keeping it going because we weren't going to buy a car until... We wanted to pay off the mortgage first. Our mortgage was paid off. So we have a car that has died. Although for the $1,800 we spent on it, what, let's see, how long have we had it? 24... Four years. We spent eighteen hundred bucks on it for our daughter. Insurance for, paid for more than for the cost. For four <laughs> years, we got twenty-two. No, twenty-five. Twenty-five hundred dollars back from one insurance claim, and um, eight hundred dollars back from another insurance claim. <laughs> so, I think we got our money's worth out of it. Yeah, I just we wouldn't have spent the extra four hundred and something dollars. Uh, last week yeah well it's kind of a gamble but I said to Tara wow you know it's nice having the other car and if we can just get it to go a little further although I should have listened to myself because they BJ and I were looking to figure out what it was and I couldn't tell what it was and it was leaking from a spot further down in, a, in an unusual spot and I thought I wonder if that's a water pump well they ended up changing the radiator and some hoses and it didn't solve the problem and now they're saying it's a water pump <laughs> i was thinking i should have yeah. gone with my gut when i first heard it because we wouldn't have fixed it if it was that probably yeah uh, i was a little yeah but we also have a pickup that we rarely ever drive that we can sort of it's mom's truck but we moved it out here <laughs> it's still mom's truck but we moved it out there and um Actually, I was wondering this, Karen. We just haven't paid to move it back to Mom's, so... Karen, I wonder if Stoplink will maybe ex extend its life a little. I thought about going to O'Reilly and asking them, because I know there's a stop leak for that, but I'm not sure if it's a water pump, if it would stop it or not. But it would be worth trying, because really, and the, car's, the car's not in fantastic condition, but it still runs reasonably yeah. well. It's just that our experience is when we make two major repairs on a car like this, then it becomes a snowballing downhill. Yeah. So if we could do the stop leak, then that would be worth trying to drive it a little Wait. bit longer. Yeah. Um, are we going to the Deep South right, Homestead? Home. Are we going to the Deep South South Homestead gathering? Sadly, we are not. We would, we would really like to go. to go. We loved going last year. It was a blast. We absolutely loved it, but we're really trying to get our house paid off. Um, Karen wants to know, as a parent, would you suggest your kids getting married after six months? Well, <laughs> I would say it depends on the situation and how old they are. I would say if they're older than probably 21 or 22, I would be okay with that because by that time they're getting to know. If they're 18 and we knew the person fairly well, I, it depends on what we thought of that person. Um, I have my own thoughts when you're done. But what I do six months, honestly, I, Mike and I should have had a lot more premarital counseling than the two times our pastor got together with us, which was horrible. Would have probably saved us a whole lot of headache. I would insist on premarital counseling, good premarital counseling for several weeks. Um, Assuming so, yeah. that your kids are willing to let you be involved in that. Yeah. The thing, the thing that I would say is, as parents, we can see kids and say, those kids are pretty mature for their age and yeah. they're pretty shrewd and they're making decisions for the right reasons. Yeah. And so... It, in our case, I would say, yes, we should have had more of the counseling and discussion ahead of time. But did we, our reasons weren't bad, were they? For what? For why we wanted to get married? I don't know no. why we wanted to get married. The thing is, <clears throat> um, a lot of people, one reason it's good for, for a lot of people to date a whole lot longer is because they want to overlook each other's faults. And the thing is, when you if you go to get married to somebody and you're thinking, wow, they're just amazing and they don't have any flaws whatsoever, you will immediately discover those flaws when you marry them. Yeah. And they'll and they'll be a little bit difficult that you'll have to work those out. But if you 
ignore a lot of flaws ahead of time that mm. are huge, but seem small because you tiptoe in one little thing at a time, then it's it's really going to be catastrophic because then when the other co- things come up, you're just going to be overwhelmed. And I think a lot of people, young people especially, try to, uh-huh. they get distracted by other things or their relationship goes too far in a sense where they no longer think about practical part of it. It's more like, I just love you. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, no, you need to be practical in those circumstances. And like mom said, it depends on how mature the kids are. That's why I'm saying if they're 21... 22, 3, somewhere around there. I, you know, pretty much it's none of my business. Well, it's not any really my business anyway. But here's the yeah, thing. I was going to say. I, w- I don't believe in long engagements. <clears throat> well, yeah, once you're engaged, you, you should get married. <laughs> to date longer. But once you get engaged, I really don't think you should go longer than <clears throat> three or four months well, of an engagement. I think once you've made the decision to get married, I said, go down to the justice of the peace or to the church, to the pastor of the church the next week and get married. That's take fine the with me. And, hey, I asked the pastor, hey, you want to go to the Bahamas? <laughs> Just yeah. all three of us together. You have your place. We have our place. You get married and then you can spend yeah, your time. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't believe in lo- These people who are engaged for one or two years, I'm sorry. <clears throat> that's ridiculous. I think Jeff would like that. I would not. Yeah. I would well, not do that. You can so. make a deal with him and say, well, you know, <laughs> At the beginning of your year sabbatical, you could do the first week of, you know. Yeah, Teresa says, that. and you think you can change him too. You're not going to change him, and kids don't know that. Jennifer says, my husband is so lucky because I have zero faults. And so you know what? I think we could testify to that. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and I'm not saying that you should say the person should have absolutely no flaws at all, but I think what happens a lot of times is people, people, in a relationship will be like, oh, this is wonderful. And then something will come to light and they'll be like, <gasps> and then they'll say, well, it's only that one thing. Yeah. And then they'll kind of bury that. And then once everything's cool and it's rocking along again, then something else, smack. <gasps> yeah. And, and I don't mean something small like, oh, she puts the toilet paper on the roll differently than me. It's usually bigger things, but people yeah. will overlook one. And then after they kind of forget about it and settle down, then something else will come up and they'll overlook that. And it's kind of like the frog in the pot analogy. Yeah. Eventually, they've overlooked so many things that there's a, just a huge catastrophic problem right in front of them. And yeah. like, there's a point where you have to say, okay, but if I was advising my friend in their situation with their boyfriend, girlfriend, what would I say to them in that circumstance? Yes. So anyway, all right, guys. Um, no, BJ can't replace the water pump on this car because it's too hard to work on, and he's sworn he's never touching that car again. So unfortunately, all right, guys. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. I will not be making soap tomorrow morning. I'm very sorry. I have to take my grandma to the hospital. Um, we will be back on Monday. No. Mike will be back on Monday. I have to take my brother to Denver to the spine doctor. Our taxi service. Do we, do we know what's going on later this week? Do and we have some, a lot going on on Friday. I don't know what we're doing for the rest of the week. Okay. We have talked about going live more frequently, doing a few shorter shows live. And in between, um, we I don't know when we're going to start that or if we are. But anyway, please visit us at livingonadime.com. And if you like my soaps, go to homemadesoapbakingsupplies.com. Click on soaps. Also, if you guys want to make soap i have my starter kits on sale for 30 percent off to make your own homemade soaps if you want homemade soap making supplies.com the link is on the front page we will see you guys next time have a great night bye, bye. thanks for coming and now just talk about filler content you know filler content filler well, i was content. gonna say toby says being married <laughs> Being married means you agree to work it out, so no person, no matter what, so take the time to get to know what you need to overcome. Absolutely. Yeah. That's brilliant. If that's still in the show. If not, oh well. I said it to you, and you've learned something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you eat one of my delicious biscuits?